I've, I've watched your videos and, and, and honestly, to watch, I've seen you out there on cold days and, and uh, I mean, lines and lines of cars coming up. And what they're doing is, I, I, often, I often ask my pastor friends when I speak to them and, and kind of help counsel them sometimes, and I'll say, what does, the, what does the world think when they drive past your church? Mm, wow. Yeah. What is their impression of you when they drive past your church? Have they any, have mm. they any impression at all? Or are you just a dead space in their mind? Or do, you th do they think you're a, you're a crazy bunch of people that are, you know, um, yeah. tongue-talking and, and falling on the floor mm -hmm. kind of stuff? What is, the, what is the world's impression of you? And if you can create a, a, a means by which the world can get to you, I call it RAMP Ministries, R-A-M-P, Reaching and Mentoring People. And if you can create okay. ramps so that the, mm -hmm. the folk that would drive past your church on a normal day will suddenly think, oh, that's the place okay. that helps folks. That's where I can mm -hmm. go if, I'm, if I need help. Suddenly, you've changed the church from just being a closed box that folk drive past and don't even think about to watching lines of cars being fed. They're thinking, wow, look at those folks. They really must believe what they do. And that's what pastors need to be thinking about in your churches right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, that's so true. And I love that ramp. I had to write that down. That, that's, wow, that is so yeah. really good helpful and it's true i think it's so easy philip um to especially pastoring if we're not careful to lose sight of the vision that god has for his church because it's really it's really it's his church. his church it's his work right and we steward this thing so like you know i think it's if we're not careful we can get caught up on the inside you know maybe drama or issues i think it was an old pentecostal preacher that one time said regarding the church, he said, if, if they ain't fishing, they're fighting. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, right. And so what does that mean? Oh, that's, that's our focus. focus. Oh, that. Are we focusing only on the inside, inside, inside? Is it just the believers club? Like you said, is it just a bunch of people talking in tongues and falling on the floor? What are they actually doing? What, what message are we projecting to this community? Yes. The message of the gospel, but again, that, Actions speak louder than words, I like to say. Yes. And I think when we can start meeting people's tangible needs, um, they become more open to uh, the spiritual uh, spiritual things, uh, spiritual needs that they have. A lot of people don't. Our, our community is a little different here. We're, uh, you know, we're northeast Pennsylvania, Scranton area. We're about two hours from New York City, two hours from Philadelphia. Um, the Pocono Mountains are kind of around the, the rim place, yeah. of, of the valley here. It's a beautiful area, ski, you know, ski slopes and lakes and all that. Um, but this area, a lot of people have uh, what I would say religion, and um, they identify by that. That's say, oh, well, I'm, I'm whatever, fill in the blank, you know. But uh, I think where we can find that common ground is when we minister to people's needs. You know, uh, of course, the scripture... Right. Jesus says, I, I, you know, you, you know, you're sick. I was sick and you visited me. You know, I was naked. You gave me clothing. I was hungry. You gave me something to eat. And of course, we know where he said, whatever you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you've done to the Lord himself. Yeah. And so I think that um, keeping that in front of the church, like like reaching them uh, with the gospel, the life changing message of the gospel and the spirit filled uh, you know, ministry. But again, if we can meet their tangible needs, like you take when this whole, again, thing broke out in March and all of a sudden the whole country is under lockdown, sure. there became an immediate shortage of everything. The, short, the shelves were bare in many places. There was a limit on how much you could purchase, if you could find it. Um, and yet, honestly, I've never seen in my entire life, and I'm, I'm second generation, you know, and all that uh, Pentecostal and everything. But I've never seen in my life of 55 years an opportunity like we have right now. I agree. Uh, to reach agree. people, right? I mean, it's... Absolutely. So it's just uh, exciting times. Absolutely. Well, I, I'll never forget years ago, years and years ago, um, Joel Osteen's dad, John Osteen, was a, a great friend of our families. And uh, we were speaking at his church one time, and, and 
at the beginning of the service, they did praise and worship, and then he, all the lights went off in the church. And, and Brother Osteen had a, a, a drawer in his pulpit. He pulled his drawer out, and there was a huge map behind him. And he flicked on lights, and he had assigned the entire church a region of the world to pray for. So as he flicked up a, a switch, it would come up on, the, on the, the, the world behind him, and folk would start praying for that country that they had been assigned to pray for the country. And as he flicked through these lights and more lights came up in the world, more folk were praying in the church, and pretty soon the whole church was just a, just a, a crescendo of prayer. I stood, I literally, I could hardly speak. And after we were for lunch, and I said, Brother Osteen, that is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. And this is what he said. He said, I've learned if I can keep people focused on the world, mm. they will not be focused on themselves. Wow. Wow. And let me tell you what you are doing is you are focusing your people on the world and that will go for a peaceful church.